guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Claire and you are watching another episode of my Cake Chemistry series, the one where I talk all about the science behind baking and a whole load of other stuff. If you're enjoying these videos so far, please do remember to give them a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications button so that you don't miss any of the latest updates from me. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in the future, please do pop them in the comments below or come and say hello to me over on Instagram. Fats such as butter, margarine and oil are one of the main ingredients we use in baking and play a very important role in many recipes. If we want to alter the type of fat we're using or change the quantity, it's important to understand how it functions in our recipe. Today I'm going to explain the top five and maybe a few others as well. Number one, providing tenderness. A tender baked good is fairly soft, easy to bite into or break and perhaps a little bit crumbly. It's basically the opposite of tough. What fat does is it coats what we might call structure builders or tougheners such as flour particles, egg proteins and starches, preventing them from hydrating and forming structure. This gives the baked good a very pleasant mouthfeel. However, too much tenderness and the product is more likely to collapse in the oven, fall apart easily or just be overly crumbly. It's important that we have a careful balance of tougheners and tenderizers. Pastry and shortbread biscuits, for example, have a very high amount of fat, giving them their characteristic tender and short texture. However, breads and pastries have a more even ratio of fat to flour or even no fat at all. The ability of fats to tenderize depends on the following factors. The quantity we use, the more there is in the recipe, the more tenderizing it's going to be. The consistency, the softer and more fluid our fat, the more tenderizing it is. So oil, for example, provides more tenderness than butter. The mixing time, the more we mix our fat, the smaller the particles become and so it's more evenly distributed throughout our mix. The presence of emulsifiers such as mono and diglycerides which are found in many margarines out there, these tend to be very tenderizing. And finally, the leavening it provides. Leavening stretches cell walls, making them thin and weak, and so butter and margarine provide more tenderness than oil, because oil does not leave in baked goods at all. The second function of fats in baking is in fact to do with leavening. Fats such as butter and margarine help to leaven baked goods, or make them rise by trapping air bubbles via the creaming methods, i.e. beating them with sugar. They also contain small water droplets which evaporate in the oven creating steam. Cakes and biscuits made via the creaming method rely on plastic fats for most of their volumes and tender fine crumb. As well as this, emulsifiers that are often found in margarines also have a very high ability to leave and bake goods and keep the air bubbles evenly distributed throughout the mixture. Function three is adding moistness. Fluid ingredients such as oil add moistness, even though it actually contains no moisture itself, i.e. water. Butter and margarine provide moisture because they actually contain small droplets of water. Emulsifiers also contribute to this, perhaps because they help to hold in the water droplets contained in products such as margarine. Generally, the more fluid a fat is, the more moistness it provides. Function number four, preventing staling. Fats interfere with starch retrogradation, one of the main processes that induces staling in baked goods. What they do is they interfere directly with starch molecules, preventing them from bonding and gelatinizing. This is why baked goods containing fat do tend to stay fresher, more moist and tender for slightly longer. And finally, function number five, providing flavour. Many flavours dissolve in fat, 
giving the baked goods a lovely rich taste. The fat we use also provides its own unique flavour. Butter is very characteristic of this and again it's going to vary depending on the brand that you use or region that it's sourced from. Fats do of course have many other functions in other things such as icings, confections and of course cooking in general. Some of these include contributing colour because of its ability to take part in the Maillard reaction. It can help increase spread in cookies if that is desired. I talked about this in my recipe video for making the perfect vegan cookies. If you want to go and check that out, I'll link it below. They can act as a release agent, so we might grease our baking tins with it to help our cakes come out easily. And they can help blend flavours together because of their ability to absorb and dissolve flavour molecules. If you'd like to know more about fats and their functions in baked goods and other food products, please do let me know. I'm more than happy to do future videos. For now, I thought I'd keep it fairly short and simple, giving you the information in small chunks. It's a lot easier to absorb that way. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope it was helpful and I will see you again next week. Bye.